Hi and welcome to this next video in our probability series, the second of the fundamental counting principle videos. Arranging digits into codes is the next category of question we are going to tackle. Let's start by looking at where the number of digits available and the length of the code is the same. So in this case, a five digit code from five digits. With digits, there are two possible scenarios to bear in mind. Either the digits can be repeated or they can't be repeated. So first, let's consider a five digit code from five digits with repeats. Because the code needs to be five digits long, let's place our five slots. Then for the first slot, there are five possible options. And so we put five here. For the second slot, because digits can be repeated, there are five options again, and so we put five here. And because for each slot there are five options, because digits can be repeated, we write five in each position. The number of possible five-digit codes then with repeated digits is therefore five to the five, which is 3,125. Now let's consider a five-digit code from five digits without repeats. Well, there are five options for the first slot. Then, because no repeats are allowed, there are four options of digits available for the second slot. And so we put four here. Then three options of digits available. Then two, then one. And hopefully this looks familiar to you. We can conclude here then that the number of possible five digit codes without repeated digits is five factorial which is 120. Next, let's have a look at when we have more digits available than the length of the code. So here, a five digit code from nine digits. And we consider this with digits repeated and without digits repeated. So firstly, with repeats, let's place our five slots for the code and then one slot at a time, let's consider the options for the first slot, there are nine possible options, and so we put nine here. Then for the second option, because digits can be repeated, we still have nine options, and so we place nine here too. The thinking for each position is then the same all the way through, and so we can conclude that the number of possible five-digit codes with repeated digits is nine times itself five times, so nine to the power of five, and this gives us 59,049. And then for when digits cannot be repeated, we have nine options for the first slot, so nine here. Then we have eight options of digits for the second slot, so eight, then seven options, then six options, then five. Now this outcome is a little different from our factorial situation in that it doesn't cover all the positive natural numbers nine and less. But if we remember the fundamental counting principle, we find the total number of combined options of successive choices by finding the product of the number of options for each choice. And so here, the number of possible five digit codes without repeated digits is nine times eight times seven times six times five, which is 15,120. Let's take a look at this example now, which includes some conditions on how the code needs to be, and also finding the probability of these conditions. Remember, as soon as you need to calculate the probability, you have a three-step process. So if we read the question, make a seven-digit code from any of the ten digits, naught to nine. The code must, however, start with a three and end with a two and it says no digits may be repeated. So first they want to know how many such codes can be made, and then what is the probability of creating such a code from these 10 digits. Pause the video here for a moment if you would like to give this a go first before seeing the solution. Okay, let's place our seven slots. Then we start by first considering our options for the slots where conditions have been stipulated. So we are told the code must start with a 3, and so there is only one option for this first slot, and we are told it must end with a 2, and so there is only one option for this last slot. Then, because digits cannot be repeated, and there are no specific conditions for the second slot, 
we have 8 out of the 10 options left for this second slot, so 8. Then 7 options for the third slot, so 7. Then 6, then 5, then 4. And so the number of possible 7 digit codes without repeats is 1 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 1, which comes to 6720. Next, we have to find the probability of such a code occurring. Remember, to calculate the probability, we need to find the total number of 7 digit codes from the 10 digits available with no repeats for the denominator. And this is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. You can show this working out separately or within the probability fraction. And so we can see the probability of such a code is 1 over 90. Moving on now to arranging the letters of a word, let's start small and grow this concept with understanding. So the number of ways the letters of a word with two letters can be arranged. If we look at the word on, these letters can be arranged as O-N or N-O. In other words, in two ways. And if we look at it in terms of slots, the first slot has the option of two letters and then the second has only one option. And so the number of ways these two letters can be arranged is 2 times 1 or 2 factorial, which is 2. Then the number of ways the letters of a three-letter word can be arranged. Here let's look at the letters of the word R. These can be arranged in these six ways shown here. And if we look at this example now in terms of slots, there are three options for the first, then two options, then one. And so the number of ways these letters can be arranged is three times two times one, or three factorial, giving us 6, which correlates well with what we illustrated above. OK, so staying with arranging letters, what if letters in a word are repeated? Well, let's have a look at the word ball and see how many ways these letters can be arranged. How about, to start with, we call the L's L1 and L2, treating them like different letters. We then can say, these four letters can be arranged in four factorial ways. In each arrangement, the two letters L1 and L2 can be rearranged amongst themselves in two factorial ways without affecting the other letters B and A. Therefore, in each arrangement, these are counted two factorial times, which means there are two factorial times too many arrangements. And so the number of arrangements is then 4 factorial over 2 factorial, which is then 12. Let's have a look at an example. The question says, how many ways can the letters of the word vegetable be arranged? You can pause the video here to give this a try first if you would like. So where do we start? By first counting the number of letters in the word, in this case there are 9, and then by seeing if there are any repeated letters. So in the word vegetable, we see that there are three E's. If each letter was different, there would be nine factorial ways of arranging these letters, but we need to consider the number of extra arrangement this includes because of the repeated E's. And you can see here that for each, there are three factorial ways the E's can be arranged without affecting the other letters. And so these are counted three factorial times, which means there are three factorial times too many arrangements. The number of arrangements is then 9 factorial over 3 factorial, which is 60,480. What if there is more than one letter that is being repeated? Well, let's see what happens in this example with the word effective. They've also included asking about the probability of a particular condition in this example. Maybe pause the video for a moment to give this a go and see how you do. So if we look at how many ways the letters of effective can be arranged, well, we see that it is a nine letter word with three E's and two F's, which means the three E's can be arranged three factorial ways amongst themselves and the F's two factorial ways. And so this means there are three factorial times two factorial times too many arrangements, 
which means the number of arrangements is then 9 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial, which is then 30,240. An idea here is to practice this on your calculator to make sure you feel confident about working it out. The second question is asking us what the probability is that the arrangement will start and end with an E. Well, we've worked out the total number of arrangements, which will be our denominator. Now we need to calculate the numerator of number of arrangements with this condition of beginning and ending in an E. Let's place our nine slots. Then our first and last slots are fixed, each with an E. In other words, a one. The seven remaining letters include the two Fs, and so the number of ways these letters can be arranged is 7 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 2520. And so we can then calculate that the probability that the arrangement will start and end with an E is 2520 over 30,240, which simplifies to a twelfth. And that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching and well done for getting through to the end of the probability series. We really hope you're feeling more confident about probability and especially counting principles now. Remember how valuable it is to tackle more questions to really grow your knowledge and understanding. Our study guides have great examples to support your getting on top of probability as you prepare for your exams. We wish you all the best. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.